<laughs> okay, boils and ghouls, you are listening to the 80s slasher librarian. I better return that book I borrowed from them. The late fees are a killer. <laughs> A doll sent me into cardiac arrest. A couple days ago, I received an unmarked envelope in the mail. I know what you're thinking. I should have reported it to the police. Or at the very least, I shouldn't have opened it. But I was curious. And like most humans who should know better but don't, I needed to feed my curiosity. What I found was an old Kodak picture like the ones taken with the disposable camera, and have developed at Walmart. In the photograph was the most disturbing-looking doll I have ever seen. Its face and hands were pale, almost fleshy-looking. Its mouth was open, as if in a permanent screen, and looked as if it had a single tooth protruding from the top. Its hair looked like it was made of feathers, black feathers, like from a crow or a blackbird. What disturbed me most was the eyes. There were two dark green rage-filled eyes. I know that sounds crazy, but the doll looked angry. Angry at whomever was taking the photo. Those eyes seemed to pierce through the camera and the photograph. I couldn't stand to look at it for too long. I flipped the picture over. There were some symbols scrawled on the back that I didn't understand. It looked as if it were written in a different language. Below the symbols was a phrase written in English. May you never get a full night's sleep until you slumber in death. As I read the words, my heart quickened. Jumbled thoughts raced in my head. Why would someone send this to me? Was it some idea of a joke? Was it something to freak me out? Was someone pissed at me? Maybe it was a mistake. Either way, if the intention was to scare me, it certainly succeeded. I did end up calling the police. An officer stopped by, took my statement, and confiscated the photo. Other than that, there wasn't much they could do if there was no return address. He also lectured me on the dangers of opening an unmarked package. I knew the dangers, but I just didn't care at the time. The rest of the day, I did the best I could to get my mind off the stupid doll. But no matter what I did or who I saw, I couldn't shake it from my mind. As night approached, I became restless. Before settling into bed, I made sure the locks on my doors and windows were secure. I even went so far as to do a once-over of my apartment, checking all closets, looking under my bed, and even peeping behind the shower curtain. I was being paranoid. Despite all my precautions, I, I still didn't feel comfortable enough to sleep. I read. I watched YouTube videos. I even started a Disney movie on Netflix. Anything to get the fright out of me. A few hours later, I was finally able to relax enough to try to sleep. I wasn't asleep long when I heard a creaking noise. It sounded like a door. My closet door. I immediately straightened up and fumbled for my nightside lamp switch. I clicked it once. Nothing. Panicking, I clicked two more times. Still nothing. It was pitch black and I felt extremely vulnerable in the middle of the dark room with an open closet. I reached for my phone and opened the flashlight app. The small lights scanned the room as I checked every corner, every hump of clothing, and every shadow that resembled a dark figure lurking in my room. As I shined the light toward the closet, I hesitated. The door was creaked slightly open. I would have to walk over there to see what was inside. I sat there frozen for a long time, hearing nothing but my heartbeat echo in my ears. As a rule, I always made sure my closet door is shut tight before I went to bed. A product of childish fears, the 
boogeyman we subconsciously take with us into adulthood. The same reason I won't hang my foot off of the bed. I thought of the phrase written on the back of the picture, the one I could understand. May you never get a full night's sleep. Whoever sent this to me was getting exactly what they wanted. I wasn't sleeping. I was scared. This was their intention. I was letting this person's threat get the better of me. In that moment, I was no longer scared, but furious. I was a smart, logical person. Why was I acting like a child? That anger was enough to get me out of bed and throw the closet door open. I clicked on the light. Nothing, of course. I must have forgotten to shut the door. I crawled back into bed, no longer convinced anything was out to get me. I wasn't quite asleep yet when my body twitched, an action that happens when I'm half awake, half asleep. Annoyed, I started to roll over to my other side when a slight movement at the foot of the bed caught my eye. I turned my head, still in a sleepy daze, to the source of movement. That's when I saw it. The doll. The goddamn doll. The exact one from the picture. I stared at it in disbelief. Its angry eyes. Its gaping mouth. Its mangled hands. It stood on the end of my bed, towering over me like a great deity. The only thing I can remember feeling was terror. Sheer terror. Although that seems like such a weak word compared to the way my body, mind, and soul felt looking at that doll. I thought to myself, was this really happening? As if in response, the doll took a step forward, and I could feel the mattress sink under its weight. I tried to move, but my body was locked in place. No matter how much I willed my limbs, they just wouldn't budge. I needed to get out of here, to throw the doll against the wall, something but I couldn't. I started to scream. I felt my mouth open and my lungs draw in air, but the only sound that came out was a tiny squeak. It was as if my scream was stuck in my chest. I could feel the pressure in my chest. The doll advanced towards me, and I could only watch as it made its way, hands reaching out to me. It put its cold hands on my cheeks and drew its distorted face close to mine. It let out a guttural scream. The tightness in my chest turned to a sharp pain as it welled at me. The doll then raised its hands over its head as if to strike me. I closed my eyes expecting the final blow. A few moments passed and nothing happened. I could no longer feel the weight of the doll on my bed. I peeked my eyes open. It was gone. It must have just been a dream. When I set up, the pain in my chest overtook me once again. I could barely breathe, and every attempt to catch my breath made the pain worse. It spread. It spread into the whole left side of my body, my jaw, my neck, my arm. It was as if an invisible knife had struck my heart. It was at that moment when I thought I knew what was going on. Was I having a heart attack? I began to feel lightheaded, so I dialed 911. The ambulance was there in what seemed like seconds. The paramedics had to bust down my door. I saw them rush into my room, and that was the last thing I remembered. When I came to, I was in the hospital. The doctor overseeing my care confirmed my fears. I did indeed have a heart attack. It made no sense. I ate healthy, I exercised regularly, and there was no family history of heart disease. Why did this happen? I could tell from the doctor's face that he was just as confused as I was. After a series of diagnostic tests, everything came back normal. Even my EKG. My heart was in good shape, but it had undergone some stress. My doctor then asked if I suffered from anxiety, or if I was angry or frightened before the episode happened. I thought back to my dream with the doll although it still didn't feel like a dream. I could still see and hear everything that happened, so clearly. I knew what caused my heart attack. It was the doll. It stopped my heart. There was no other explanation. The doctor knew something was wrong. 
What is it? He asked. Anything you could tell us that could possibly prevent this from happening again? If I told him about the doll, he would think I was crazy and prescribe me meds as fast as he could, maybe even put me in an institution for a while. I shook my head, and he looked disappointed. I've been staying with my parents for the past few days, per the doctor's request. I haven't let myself fall asleep. I know the doll will come back if I do. I'm afraid that if I fall asleep, I'll never wake up again. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This is your 80 Slasher Librarian, and this is Creepy Pasta number two for this channel. This story originates from Reddit from the user AJ Shadows, AJ underscore Shadows. I will include a link to the original post from No Sleep on Reddit in the description below. I really enjoyed this story. I thought it was uh, simple and to the point and still creepy as hell. But I'd like to know what you guys thought of it in the comment section below and what you think of me doing these uh, creepypasta narrations every now and then. I'm also going to do some true scary real life stories from Reddit as well as true scary paranormal stories from Reddit in the future. So I'm looking forward to that. But until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood 80 slasher librarian saying thanks for listening and may you never get a full night's sleep until you slumber in death. Have a good night. Sleep well, listeners. Until next time.